Russia again. Russia on my mind. Okay, today we are going to discuss useful fools. It's an opinion piece I published in Brussels Morning. Lenin did not coin the phrase useful idiots, also known as useful fools, but he may well have. Russia, in all its permutations, has been the main beneficiary of useful fools. Among the ardent apologetics of the greatest mass murderer of all time, Joseph Stalin, among them were Bernard Shaw, the Webbs, Pritt, the famous British lawyer, the historians Tony, Paris, Hill and Deutscher, and that's an extremely abbreviated list. Alas, the present time is no exception. Useful fools never perish, they're just replaced. Increasingly useful idiots proliferate in the West. Journalists, businessmen, public intellectuals, academics, politicians, conspiracy theorists and lobbyists, some of whom, I assume, are well paid from the coffers of the Kremlin, some are just naive, and others are merely self-loathing paranoids. In an age of truther trutherism, <laughs> uh, alternative facts and fake news, Russia thrives. It has literally been the breeding ground of counterfactual propaganda since the 1920s, emulated by the likes of Nazi Germany. Russia's attempts to interfere with the elections in the West by leveraging social media platforms is a toxin. On YouTube, Russia surfs the murky waves of defiant anti-elitism, nascent anti-intellectualism, Western self-hatred and consummatious anti-establishment. Search YouTube for Russia-Ukraine for evidence of this reactance. The principle of free speech, enshrined in the ethos of the West, plays into the hands of criminalized dictatorships like Russia's. In the age of leverage anarchic technologies, it, this requires a major rethink, this principle of free speech. We need to begin to ban we need to begin to suppress certain kinds of counterfactual speech. This is not as controversial as it sounds. We already disallow hate speech, Holocaust denial, incitement to violence, anti-vaxxing. <laughs> we need to add to this list lies, conspiracy theories, claims which are not independently verif verified and scams. Social media networks already have in place self-policing and censorship tools, but these are blunt and capricious. With the proliferation of bots and artificial intelligence, uh, chat agents of all kinds, Russian disinformation is poised to explode in both scope and quality. The West's useful fools are vectors of such intellectual despoiling. Their critical thinking suspended, they disseminate conspiratorial anti-Western and anti-elitist narratives, which cater to the basest proclivities of the, of the less educated, the disenfranchised and the impoverished. In the information wars, unbridled free speech is a dangerous vulnerability. There is no palatable middle ground. Sacrificing liberalism for the sake of survival for the sake of triumph, is its own defeat, of course. Nor should we hand over the vetting of speech acts to governments or states, God forbid. Self-regulation by high-tech behemoths has proven to be lacking as well. Crowdsourced, grassroots vigilance is too cumbersome and contentious by half. Witness the flame wars on Wikipedia. Now what's the solution, therefore? One possible solution is, a, is mandatory digital identities, preferably identities which are reliant on blockchain distributed computer ledger technologies. NFTs, non-fungible tokens, 
are an illustration of such a mechanism. To post online, one would need to secure a digital identity NFT, replete with history of prior utterances, postings, articles, what have you. Such piercing of the veil of anonymity will elim eliminate bots and similar contraptions. It will also hold to account human interlocutors. It is likely to render textual intercourse more civil and more factual as well as embed this intercourse in the wider context of a thread. Any attempt to lie, to prevaricate or to mislead should result in the time-limited suspension or even permanent revocation of one's personal identity. This is similar to today's banning on traditional social media, such as Twitter or Facebook. And such nuclear sanction of eliminating one's identity online is bound to focus the minds of would-be abusers of the system. Great care should be taken to distinguish malicious agitprop from legitimate differences of opinion. The former invariably involves deception, the latter none. We would need to create an international fact-checking repository to tell the two apart. Wikipedia is a good, a good place to start, augmented by the likes of the Encyclopedia Britannica maybe. Attempts to manipulate the system are guaranteed, anything from hacking to deepfaking. The repository will have to be protected and impermeable to such intrusions and incursions. We would need to strike a delicate balance between transparency of content and opaqueness of infra infrastructure. Such an undertaking is possibly the most urgent task of our times. We are overwhelmed by conniving falsehoods. The very boundary between the real and the fantastic are getting blurred. We need to emerge from the platonic caves of our silos to the disinfecting sunshine of reality. The alternative is too harrowing to contemplate and may spell our doom.